Yeah, but that's at, that's after the press conference. Right? I'll be right before. Or before. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Good morning. David. David Moore. Yes. What it means for him, and what you've seen from him this all season, and then yeah. how are you perceived as far as looking outside for a veteran presence, or will you let it play out a little bit with the guys you have? Yeah, definitely. I mean, first with Sam, obviously that, that that's a really tough break, especially for him, because uh, you know he was clearly going to be a, a primary contributor. You know, as as we all felt, I thought he had an excellent off season. You know, did the did the extra over the summer, was able to see him do some work. Um, in person, so yeah, um, that, that's you know it's, it's unfortunate when these things happen, but you know he'll 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 um, do a great job in the rehab and uh, but yeah, as far as what we're doing moving forward, frankly, this is this is really what training camp's about. We, you know, we have some young players that they are going to have a great opportunity, and you know, as, as far as moving forward with you know bringing in any other guys, you know, that's to me that's all part of a normal training camp process. So we'll see what the future brings. Forward, start talking. Could you just talk about Sam and the progress he's made the last couple of years, yeah. and, and, and really the opportunity he's going to have? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Sam is uh, has you know a, a unique skill set. Uh, you know, he's probably one of the most powerful uh, players on our team. You know, as far as his ability to not only come off the edge but do things in space. You know, he, he uh, did some exceptional things for us on special teams. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he clearly was. He hit that point, um, you know, but he, he was ready to contribute more. Uh, I think he was clearly someone in the in the offseason studies. Or, you know, in hindsight, you felt maybe you could have gave him some more opportunities uh, last year. Um, but that there was a you know a veteran pass rush unit uh, that he was you know competing in. So, uh, but yeah, uh, that, that's that, that's a that's a big one. Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. Trayvon coming off pup. How do you anticipate him working into things? Uh, smartly, uh, you know, the biggest thing is to get him, you know, stay on his uh, rehab program with Britt, but to, to get him into the, the jog throughs and in the, in the teaching drills is the first step. And then, you know, we'll see how we progress into the uh, individual. How much do you think he just missed it the last since getting hurt? Oh, of course he missed it. Uh, no, you know, no one wants to sit in the classroom all day and, and then, you know, go out and watch his brothers compete. Yeah, he, he definitely misses it. And I know he'll be excited to be out there. I'm show with the athletic. What's your uh, what's your message to the team, particularly the new guys, when you go into your first practice? Well, I, uh, we have a process. You know, we we have a practice ethic um, presentation that, that's you know, frankly, the you know the original slides are probably about 20 years old. Uh, so I mean, it's it's something that's been built over time, and there's different experiences that that tie into that presentation. Now, obviously, you know, you have CBA CBA roles that you know things that. You know that, that that you've been practicing with here in the past, and, and this is the time now that the the tempo shifts. You know, and I think the biggest thing is the the self discipline, the emotional discipline, uh, of moving forward. But at the end of the day, this these are the practices that we need. I mean, this is this is the closest we'll get to to playing real football. Uh, but you know, the the real reality is, you know, as you continue to go through these install practices, you know, the stress of what they got to go through schematically, and but you know, but the team has to learn how to practice, you know, and, and you go through it every year. It never changes uh, because 25% of our roster is new. Um, so yeah, there, there's always some growing pains when you get into this in, into this practice. And uh, but I know our guys are excited. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Obviously, about Sam uh, Nealon might have to step up and get more reps. How does he look so far in camp? I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Nealon, Nealon. Nealon. Okay. How does he look so far in camp? Uh, I mean, I mean. It looks great. I mean, everybody looks great in helmets and underwear. <laughs> but, I mean, we're ready to go practice. Yeah, and I know he's excited. You know, saw him in there last night, getting some extra work. But yeah, he, I mean, he's definitely excited. I mean, obviously, we always talk about the second year jump, but when you lose Sam Williams, now you're asking a rookie to maybe move up yeah. a little bit. How do you think he'll be able to handle this? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, he'll get more opportunities. And, you know, and all of our young guys need, need this training grant, need this atmosphere. But, you know, definitely he'll get more opportunities to, to to take advantage of, you know, what's in front of them. Jane. Jane Slater, NFL Network. Uh, what element of Trayvon Diggs's game did you guys really miss last year? And, and oh. what excites you about getting him back on the field? I mean, he's uh, he's such a playmaker. Obviously, his ability to 
to go get the football, uh, get his hands on the football. You know, his, his ch challenge of the the receiver, the matchups, all that. Yeah, we we missed we missed all of his game, and I think you know where he is in his career. I mean, I, you know, uh, I think his you know his value speaks for itself. You know, both with the contract and, and the way his team. I mean, just just think about that day. I mean, that was a that was a bad day for everybody. You know, when he went down. With Micah Parsons and Mike Zimmer in the morning, Trayvon, I, I guess, has now been included in that mix. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think that's really it's all part of this training camp, you know, atmosphere and. You know, those are the meetings when you look through it, regardless of the position, you, you get the most out of. So, yeah, I think it's great that those guys are coordinated. And, and um, yeah, but, I mean, that's that's what training camp's for, you know, spending that extra time. Does it show a maturation on Trayvon's part? Yeah, uh, definitely. But, you know, I, Trayvon's always been a ball, you know, ball guy. I mean, he, he loves the game. Uh, you know, I, you know, I think you could see that early, you know, as a rookie and the connection that him and Al Harris – have and uh, but I, I think it's great that he's expanded and you know broadened his horizon. It's you know it is a new system, so uh, just getting the specifics of it. But yeah, no, you know, I think uh, anytime players and coaches spend one on one time together, extra time, it, it's there's nothing but good things that come out of that. Um, the NFL said that coaches have to do in game interviews this year. I don't know. Yeah, excited. Real excited about it. <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, just in terms of you got to talk to them after the half, yeah. obviously, that kind of thing. But now it's in the game. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised by it. I mean, I think that's, you know, I think access is is uh, something that's, you know, always uh, talked about. So yeah, I, I don't know the specifics of it, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's part of our game. Excited. Fire it up, man. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> chain, chain me down. Yeah. Saw so you to be athletic, Mike. Uh, we talked to Overshone last year after his injury, and then even a couple of days ago, he just seems to carry a very upbeat uh, mentality and kind of way about him. How have you seen his personality play a role in how he's attacked his rehab, and even before his rehab, how he was last year in the preseason? Yeah, I, I agree with your description. I think he has great energy. Uh, he's he's had that from the day he walked in here. He is a you know his light is bright. You know he has an infectious personality. Uh, everything he does is full speed. Uh, you know you could obviously see it at, see it at the University of Texas. You know he was everywhere. Uh, the way he played his play style. So uh, I mean watching him go through the the rehab process. You know the way he attacked that. So yeah, definitely um, love his personality. Love his approach. And and it's great to you know start continue to bring him back the way we are. Do you see that with with uh, with his teammates too, they kind of gravitate towards the way that he kind of Oh, plays. definitely. I, I think it's part of his, you know, his natural personality too. It's not just on the field. Uh, but yeah, he definitely he definitely brings that to the table. Yeah. Jeff Cole, Fox 4. Uh, Coach Tyler Smith entering his third season here. He's had the ability to be around veterans like Tyron and Zach Martin and says he's a leader now. How have you seen him develop into a leader here? Yeah, I think he really kind of started taking those steps last year. You know, I, I thought that he had some excellent leadership moments. Um, you know, I think his play style is something that he, he becomes a natural leader by example, you know, because the way he plays, you know, not, not every leader has to be a vocal or, you know, call him up. You know, there's been many of um, players go through this league that their, their play speaks for itself and it, and it you know, creates the, the opportunity for others to follow. So he, you know, he, he has established that. But yeah, he's definitely speaking up more. And I think if you just look at the, the dynamics of the offensive line room, you, know, I, you, you have an experienced group and you have a, you got a young group. It's, it's as balanced of an offensive line room as far as experience and youth that, that I've been a part of. That what kind of impact can he have on guys like Guyton and BB? <clears throat> impact on, on guys like Tyler Guyton and Cooper. Oh, I think he'll continue to have an impact on them. I mean, he's definitely a guy. If I was in that room, I would follow. You know, and you know, he, he, we all know the type of leader Zach Martin is. Uh, but yes, I mean, Ty, Tyler had he 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 has that type of command and that credibility. Absolutely. Uh, Joe Hoyt, Lone Star Live. Tyron Billy Johnson is kind of had a unique career. He's been in a lot of places. Obviously, had an impressive Sunday practice. What have you kind of seen from him in terms of his growth since he's gotten here? I mean, he really he's really done that since he's been here. I mean, he's um, he's always someone that makes the you know the the, the practice highlights. Um, I, I think if you know he just needs a he needs a full opportunity. You know, and it's it's great he's here from day one. So yeah, T Billy's a he's kind of a locker room favorite too. So uh, just love the way he goes about it. Right. 
Brad Sham, Cowboys Radio. Do you remember when in your career you would have convinced yourself that uh, having your young players essentially play a game with a week and a half of practice would be enough? <laughs> Uh, I've never thought about it, so uh, I think it's just like anything in, in in the game of football. There's changes in training, or you know, change, changes in procedure. You know, you know, I've I've been able to, you know, as a head coach you know, through two CBAs, and you know, it's part of the job. You know, you, you have to change and adjust, and, and and make sure you get your guys ready to play. And you know, at the end of the day, all 32 teams are operating under the same procedures, and and everybody has their process, uh, but. I feel like we do a really good job getting our guys ready. Pat in the back. Not you. Not, yeah, not me. You. Pat Noni, okay. NBC5 Dallas. Um, you mentioned okay. Zach Martin a second ago. Building on that, we see the great player on the field that he is over and over again. Yeah. But what makes him special in the day to day that you see from him that has made him into one of these all time greats that he has become? Uh, if I, if you're looking for one word, I'd say consistency. For for as consistent as he is, as far as the level of play, he, he's that same individual, individual each and every day. Uh, he's, uh, you know, his work ethic, uh, his approach, um, you know, his command. Uh, you, you don't see a guy that you know emotionally jumps up and down. He, he's he's really consistent, and he he gives our young guys just a great role model to follow. Uh, but I, I, he, he's clearly one of the most consistent guys I've ever been around. <laughs> Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. Circling back to the linebacker core, obviously last year because of injury, you guys struggled a lot with depth at that position. We talked a lot with Eric Kendricks, Damone Clark, Overshone obviously coming back. Mm -hmm. And when you see guys like Brock Mogison with the fourth down stop in the red zone drill, yeah. you see Jason Johnson interception. Can you talk about how the, the switch has flipped from lack of depth to having so much depth? On the yeah, team? definitely got a lot of depth and, and, and really and really like the young players because, you know, those guys are going to play a ton of football. And uh, it's, you know, it's definitely just like you've already stated, you know, from a numbers perspective, we're, we're in a much better place than we were last year. Uh, but we got some, we got some young guys that really, really have, you know, we're excited about. And I think Buddy is also someone that you should recognize as that's really has done some really nice things here. And you can see his his confidence and understanding. And uh, you know, because he because he did a hell of a job for us on special teams. But I think he's also taking a big step, you know, as far as the linebacker in the new system. Well, I, I think it's it's like anything. I, I think that when you put together a new staff, you, you definitely don't want to kind of just go, you know, right with what you had in place. And I think Greg brings that um, that perspective. Obviously, being a former player, um, successful player, and you know, so he brings up you know a player's perspective to you know to his room but you know I think also the uh, you know being able to identify what Mike Zimmer's defense you know he's he's not only played in it but he's also you know he's done some you know internships with Mike up there in Minnesota so I mean there's definitely a connection there and, and, and Mike is you know very very high on on Greg you know go, going back to the interview process so um, love his demeanor uh, consistent hardworking uh, but I, I think it's he's been he's been a great addition to our staff. On Trevon, will he will be a slow ramp up, days and pads, or how, how's the process go? Yeah, it'll be slow. Yeah, he, I don't look for him. He won't do individual today. He'll work more on the side, so forth. Uh, as I said earlier, he'll work work more in the mock game, more in the jog through things. We want we want to you know get him more in the teaching teaching part of it. You know, kind of going back to phase two in a sense. You know, we'll, we'll take him back and kind of progress him. So. And secondly, Guyton got rest with the first team. How did he do? How did he do in Will that continue? Uh, you going to practice? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, well, then check it out. Check it out. Um, number 60. <laughs> yeah, did good. Um, yeah, he's, uh, I thought he did some really nice things. I thought he had some good pass sets. You know, I think ability, the opportunity to work against Micah, that's always a, a great opportunity. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, I, I think the big thing with our young guys is, you know, you, you got to, you got to look at the whole picture. You know, this is their first time to really go full speed in some of these concepts and, and, and techniques that we're asking them to do. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that all these guys have, have done a nice job. And, and today's the first real opportunity to, to see what it's like. So excited to get out there. I know everybody is. You mentioned Guyton going against Micah. Can that 
accelerate his, his learning process or is, is there a flip side of that where it can kind of beat him down a little bit if Mike is constantly getting him in practice? Well, I, I think just like anything, any any time you you take a take a rep against a, you know a player of Micah's uh, ability, you know, qual those are quality reps regardless of the outcome. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, you, it, it, this is pro football. You know, to think you're going to go through this this league or uh, uh, your first padded practice unscathed is is not not realistic. Realistic. So, uh, but you know, everybody wants to get out there and, and compete and so forth. And that's the beauty of why you have video, and that's why we have nine cameras out there, you know, capturing all this from different angles. And uh, it's a great learning experience. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. Compared to the back half of the season last year, does Devon Clark, Devon Clark, maybe feel a little bit more free now that a lot of responsibilities are kind of taken off his plate in that linebacker court? I don't know about free. I think just like anything. I mean, we all have. Every one of us has. We have a job description, you know. Then, then you have job responsibility. Obviously, it can it can change and adjust year to year. You know, I, I think just watching him now settle into his his initial responsibility. He, he's definitely. Uh, he, I know he feels good about it. Um, he's he's got a year years of experience under his belt. He, you know, he's he's played a lot of football for us. Uh, so yeah, I, I think he he would be he'll be better regardless of. You know the position playing just you know just because of the experiences he's had in the past. But yeah, he, he definitely looks more confident and he's and he's playing faster. How important is Eric Hendricks' uh, mentorship to Clark as well? Well, he, Eric's very important to that whole defense. You know, obviously he's the you know, he's the one player that's played a lot of football in the system. You know, he's clearly you know um, Mike's voice in the locker room. Uh, you know, his green dog ability is. You know, is seamless and, and that and that's huge. I mean, he's the quarterback of the defense. So yeah, definitely. I know, I know the the other players uh, use him as a sounding board, sounding board all the time.